atrioventricular hard block. This describes the conduction disturbances between the atria and ventricles. First degree heart block. There is prolongation of the BR interval. As this BR interval, as we said before, represents the time needed from the initial stimulation of the atrium to the start of depolarization of the ventricles. The normal duration of the BR interval is one-fifth of a second, 0 0.2 of a second, or less than or equal to 5 small square in width, or one big square. As we see here in this example, there is prolongation of the BR interval. Here, this is a big square, it is more than this big square, from the beginning of the B wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. It's about one small square plus the big square. Here also in this example, we have too much prolonged BR interval. Here from the beginning of the B wave to the beginning of the QRS complex, more than one big square. This is the first degree heart block. So the first degree heart block is prolongation of the BR interval, but there is fixed prolongation. So this BR interval is prolonged, but equal to this one and equal to this one. So there is fixed prolongation of the BR interval. This degree heart block. Second degree heart block. It has two types, Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. Mobitz type 1, there will be progressive prolongation of the BR interval. It is not fixed in this case. There is progressive prolongation of the BR interval till an impulse is to be conducted or till a B wave will not be followed by QRS complex. It can be called Wickenbach. The lesion here is in the proximal part of the AV junction. As we said before, the AV junction is composed proximally of the AV node and distally from the bundle of his. So in Mobitz type 1, the pathology here will be in the proximal part of the AV junction. This example is showing first normal BR interval within the big square, then a little bit more prolongation, then more and more prolongation, then more and more and more prolongation, then a B wave here better than the T wave without QRS complex. Then we will start over again with normal BR interval, then progressive prolongation, and so on. So here there is prolongation of BR interval, but progressive prolongation. It is not fixed prolonged BR interval like in first degree heart block. Here is the Mobitz type 1 from the second degree heart block. Progressive prolongation of the BR interval till one missed beat will be there. In second degree heart block, Mobitz type 2. It is unlike type 1. Here there is no prolongation of the BR interval. BR intervals are equal and normal. So, first degree heart block, fixed, prolonged BR interval. Second degree heart block, Mobitz type 1, there is progressive prolongation and there is some missed beats. In Mobitz type 2 of the second degree AV block, we will have normal and equal BR intervals, but we will have sudden unconducted beat. This may be of high degree, which we can call it advanced second degree AV block, and it can be 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, we mean by this every third beat or every fourth beat will fail to be conducted. It's a more rare and serious condition and usually it's an indication of pacemaker implantation. The lesion in this case will be in the distal part of the AV junction. In Mobitz type 1 it was in the proximal part of the AV junction. Here is in the distal part of the AV junction. This example is showing us a normal BR interval. It is within the big box fixed BR interval, it is not prolonged, and there is no progressive prolongation, but suddenly we will have a B wave without a QRS complex that should be here. And as we saw before, in the exit block or in the sinus arrest, if there is a pause, we will have a skip beat. This skip beat comes from the ventricle, because it is exactly like the BVC. Wide, and the QRS is opposite to the T wave and bizarre shaped and without preceding B wave. So this is skip beat is coming from the ventricles. And then we will start over again with normal sinus rhythm again. So here is three and the fourth beat fails to be conducted here. This is Mobitz type two. Of course we will not call it Mobitz type two except if there is fixed fourth missed beat, three to one, three to one. 
third degree heart block. It's a type of AV dissociation and we can call it complete heart block. We will find B waves in the ECG with normal rate and equal B to B interval. As we can see here, these arrows are pointing to the B waves. We can notice that they are regular, they are of normal rate. We can calculate the big boxes here, one, two, three, it's almost four. So the B wave rate here is about 75 B waves per minute. But the QRS complexes, although they are regular, but very slow heart rate. It's about 10 big boxes, so the heart rate here is about 30. The QRS complexes rate is about 30. And there is no fixed relationship between the B waves and the QRS complexes in the closed one. So there is no fixed BR interval. There is no prolongation of the BR interval. And there is no relation between the QRS complexes and the B waves. This complex may be near to the B wave, but this complex is too near to the B wave to be able to say this is produced by this B wave. And and also the complex is too far from this B wave. So there is no fixed relationship between B waves and QRS complexes and these B waves are not responsible for those QRS complexes. So to diagnose third degree heart block or complete heart block, we will find no fixed relation between the B waves and the QRS complexes. And the B wave rhythm will be regular and totally different from the QRS complex rate complete heart block and also this is an indication of pacemaker implantation bifascicular and trifascicular block the combination of left anterior hem block or left posterior hem block plus right bundle branch block we can call it bifascicular block bifascicular means two fascicles are blocked or have some pathology right bundle plus one of the fascicles of the left posterior or the left anterior bundle branch. We will call it bifascicular block. If this bifascicular block is combined with prolongation of the BR interval, we will call it trifascicular block. We have an example here. There is a white QRS complex, so we have bundle branch block here, as we said before. So once we suspect bundle branch block, again, we will look to V1 and V2 on one hand, and V5 and V6 on the other hand. Then V1 here is showing tall R wave and tall R wave here also and inverted T wave in V1 and V2 and the classic RSR dash, RSR dash pattern and there is a deep S wave in V5 and V6. So this is right bundle branch block. But we will have here right axis deviation. Shouldn't be there a normal right bundle branch block lead 3, lead AVF, lead 2 are to the negative side. So this is left axis deviation. So now we have right bundle branch block and left axis deviation. And also there is prolongation of the BR interval. So we have here also first degree heart block. The combination of the right bundle branch block plus the left axis deviation plus the prolongation of the BR interval is trifascicular block.